Part three of using the music editor in Studio One Three. Let's go ahead and jump right into this. Uh, in part three, we are going to move on from the arrow tool and take a look at some of the other tools we have available and their features, as well as quantize functions, transposing our MIDI notes, and the humanize features, and much more. So let me go ahead and select our piano part here again, and I will F2 to bring up the editor. We can access the split tool by pressing two on our keyboard, and the split tool is pretty straightforward, of course. We are essentially using it to split our MIDI notes. So while I have it selected, I can go ahead and click on a single note to uh, split that. I'll control Z to undo, and I'll bring up the arrow tool and select a group of notes here and bring back the split tool, cut, and then we can cut a group of notes there. One thing to keep in mind is that if we do have a group of notes selected for a cut, they do need to be directly above or below one another. So if I were to come with the arrow tool and select this group that are on uh, different bars here and bring back the split tool and I perform a cut here, then basically we're only gonna have this uh, group here. And this plays on the crosshairs that we see. So the horizontal crosshair that I'm moving up and down here, we place that under the pitch where we want to per perform that uh, cut or split. The vertical crosshair is going to show the actual position of where the cut's gonna be. And since we have our snap to grid turned on, then you can see that that's jumping to our quarter note setting here. If we don't wanna do have it do that, then we can just press in our, on our keyboard or deselect up there and then now you can see we have more fine control of that position of the vert vertical crosshair. I'm going to control Z and undo that. One last thing to keep in mind about the split tool is that we have a different function that we can make use of with the alt key and so we are working with this first event that I've got selected here in our range view. If I come down we can see that this is one event starting at bar two and ending at bar six here. If I were to hold down alt while I make a cut here, then our event actually gets split at that cut as well. So I can select this portion here and that's one event that's been separated and then this is uh, the other half. Moving on, I'll press three and access the paint tool. And we've talked about the paint tool in part one and two of our series, and we know that we can add, delete, and resize MIDI notes with it. But there are a few other features to be aware of that are available to us. First, something simple um, before I go on that I wanna mention is that many of you may already know this, but while preparing for this, I just found out that while we are moving around within our editor, if you take note to the piano roll here, if we're using the paint tool or the aerial tool as, as well, notice that the key or the pitch that we're on will be highlighted on our piano roll. So it's easy to get lost in the editor and trying to figure out which note that we're editing, but just remember that you can pay attention to the piano roll and the particular note or pitch that you're on is going to be highlighted gray and I hope that that's showing up in the video. It's pretty faint, but uh, it could help, it could be a useful guide in finding your way around here. One other tip that can be useful is we've seen that we can click, hold, and drag to adjust our length beyond what we have set in our quantize value, but know that while we're holding our left mouse button, we can also drag up or down to adjust the velocity of whatever note that we're creating. Now, if we'd like to edit the velocity of any existing notes here, then we can, while the paint tool is active, just hold down Alt. I'll click on the center here and then drag up and down. And then you can see we can adjust velocities that way. And if I bring up the arrow tool and select a group of notes, I'll come back to the paint tool, hold down Alt, and I'll just click on this center one here we can adjust the velocity for a group of notes as well. Another feature involving the Alt key, and actually one of my more favorite features, is that if we hold it down while we draw notes, we can enter into a 
line drawing mode, and we're going to create a series of notes based on our quantized value here. So if I go ahead and hold down Alt while I draw, you can see that we get a series of quarter notes here. Now if I Control Z and undo that, let's change our quantized value to 16th notes. And then I'll go ahead and hold down Alt. We can see we've got our 16th notes. And I can actually come down with it, up, and draw in like so. So a few different options there. And the last feature of the paint tool that we'll talk about is creating new instrument parts. So if I come over to a blank area here, I can click in our editor and you see we've created a new MIDI part here in the arrange view and we can use this to enter in new notes as well. Next in line we have the eraser tool and this is pretty straightforward. We can click on an individual note to delete it or we can click, hold, and drag and just quickly delete out bunches of notes at a time. We then have the mute tool and we can access that by pressing 5 and this functions pretty much similar to the erase tool in that we can mute individual notes and we can also click, hold, and drag to select a group of notes. We next have the Listen tool, which we can access by pressing 6, and we've briefly talked about this in uh, Part 1 and 2. We can just uh, activate that and then click and playback anywhere within our instrument track, and it will solo that track and mute all the others. Now let's move on to transposing our notes. and. We have several different options available on how we can go about doing this. We can transpose a single note or group of notes, transpose a whole MIDI part or instrument part, or we can transpose all parts on an instrument track. And let's go ahead and take a look at each one of these and how we can go about doing that. I'll go ahead and press 1 to bring back the arrow tool and let's come back to this first event. Now let's say I'd like to transpose these last four notes here. We just want to be sure that we select them all. We can then come to the action menu here and I can click choose transpose up at the top and then we have this little window here where we have a variety of choices that we can make. Now by default we're going to be on one octave. We've got 12 semitones here to the right. We can click the two octave and you can see that this adjusts to negative 24 semitones. We can also click in here and manually enter a value. We can also use this slider here and enter a positive value. We can we have a range from plus 64 to minus 64. So I'm going to go ahead and choose the negative octave, negative 1. And down below we actually have the ability to set them all to one particular pitch. So if I were to choose this and say it's on C3, I'll hit OK. Now we can see all of those notes are on that C3. Now I'll undo that. And if I were to go ahead and play that back, and then select them all, come back to our action menu and choose transpose, we'll choose one octave down, I'll press OK. We could play back. And it's as simple as that, pretty straightforward. Now what if we'd like to transpose an entire the notes in an entire MIDI or instrument part? I'll F2 and close out the editor. We would just simply select that part in the arrange view. We can then right click, come to our musical functions and then all the way up at the top here we have transpose will then be presented with the same window that we saw and so we're already familiar with what these settings can do. Now the last method that we have available to us is to transpose all the notes within all of the parts on a complete track here. So if we have our piano track selected and then F4 to open up the inspector we can see at the top here that we have transpose. So I'll go ahead and play this back.
and this second part is basically the exact same. Okay, now we can come to the transpose area here, and I'll raise this up. This works in semitones, so I'll raise this up by two semitones, press enter, and we'll play back. And move on to the second part. And we can hear that that's exactly the same. So that has affected both of these MIDI parts and will affect any that you have on this track. And there's actually an important difference in this last method that's gonna be different than the first two. When we use this transpose here, we're actually not changing the position of our notes graphically. They're not being moved within our editor here. So the notes are basically the same. This is kind of a real-time transposition of the notes. So I'll close out the editor again. If I were to take this back to zero, I'll open up the presence here and let's open the QWERTY keyboard. And I'm going to press Q here. I'll play Q. And then I'm going to put in 12. We'll raise that up one octave. Now when I press Q again, we're one octave above. So this is not only going to keep your notes in the same position and perform kind of a real-time trans transposing, um, if you have an external keyboard connected or you use the uh, device here, it's going to transpose whatever you play as well. And I'll just go ahead and put zero and return that back to as it was. And let's get rid of our QWERTY keyboard there. And for the last part of this video, we are going to take a look at quantizing. And we've already covered some of the quantized settings throughout this series, but there are a few other things to be aware of, and we'll take a look at these now. So I'll go ahead and bring back the editor and F4 to close out our inspector. And I'm actually going to zoom in just a touch here so we can really see the uh, where these notes are positioned within our grid. And the first thing we're going to touch on is this auto quantize. And this is on by default. And what this does is if I were to select a note or a group of notes and then come to our quantize value and make a change here, then those are automatically going to snap to that new setting. So if I were to choose quarter notes, then you can see that these have then snapped to the first part of bar four, our first quarter note. I'll control Z. Now while we have a group of notes selected, we can also press Q on our keyboard and that's gonna quantize them as well. And if we were to select a whole part within our arrange view, just to zoom out a bit here, if we select that whole part and then press Q, you can see all of the notes within that part are then quantized. Now there are a variety of other quantized functions that we can make use of within the action menu. So if I were to select this group of notes here, come to the action menu, you can see that we've got quantize, which we've already taken a look at. The shortcut key is here, Q. We can quantize by 50% by holding Alt-Q. Now, if we were to perform a quantize and we want that to kind of be permanently stamped on our notes, then we would choose the freeze quantize. And then the position that these notes ended up at when we were playing is going to be disregarded in the future and we can't undo that quantize that we've done. It's going to be permanently imprinted onto the notes when we choose this freeze quantize. If we choose quantize end here, then basically the end of the notes will be quantized. So I'll go ahead and select that group again and notice that they are not to the end of our bar here. And I'll come to the action menu and I did something there. So let me control Z. They're still selected. Quantize end. Now you can see that they're all, the note ends are positioned at the end of bar nine. Next we have human eyes. And this is just going to add imperfections. This is particularly useful if you have a drum part and um, 
they are say it's acoustic drums and you're you're not a drummer yourself but you've uh, inputted some notes into the MIDI editor and you just want to kind of not have those sound so mechanistic then you can use the humanize or humanize less shift Q will restore our timing so if we've quantized a group of notes and we'd like to go back to as they were we would use that restore velocity freeze velocity these are similar to what we've talked about above but just for velocity we can delete double notes delete short notes split at grid now we can see that this group of notes basically they run the course of one full bar if we were to split at grid then you can see that these are then split into quarter notes because that's what our quantized value is set to I'll control Z and undo that and let's change our quantized value to eighth notes and you can see that those already jumped because our auto quantize is on but what I wanted to show is that if I go to the right area split at grid now we've got our sixteenth notes because that's what we have our quantized value set to I'll control Z what do we have now we've got merge events and extend part to end and I'm gonna select this group here because these are f well let's see what happens with these these are overlapping into bar 9 so I believe this should take them all the way to the end of 9 if I understand this correctly extend to part oh yeah because we're working with a MIDI part so you can see that this extends the notes all the way to the end of our MIDI part and you can see that up above here much clear I'll uh, expand out a bit shift E so you can see that those notes have then been taken all the way to the end of our instrument part there now I'll go ahead and zoom back out a bit let's come back to our editor and I'll control Z and the very last thing regarding quantization that I will mention is that at the very top here we have an input quantize so if we would like for the notes that we're recording to be quantized to our quantized value as we're recording we want to be sure that we've got that checked up above here now we can also be sure that that's active within our record panel which we can access by pressing alt shift and R and then you can see down at the bottom we input quantize is active so if I just deselect here, then you can see that in the arrange view, that has also been deactivated. And if I click here, we can see that it's made active in our record panel. I'll go ahead and Alt Shift R to close out that panel. And that is the end of part three for working with the MIDI or music editor with MIDI. And in the final part of our series, we are going to take a look at the part automation lane down below here and how we can work with our velocity settings and these other parameters and how to work with the automation with these and edit that automation and then we'll be all done with the editor thanks for watching